What's up, ladies and gentlemen? James Williams Dog Waters, the one and only. And I'm here to give a special congratulations to the new owner of DogmanCams.com. Man, I wish you the best of luck in what you're doing. Push forward. Do something groundbreaking and innovative. I really want to see that. Also, with that being said, I'm here to announce the rollout of EerieExpeditions.com. And for you who are here at the Dark Waters, it's important that you head on over to EerieExpeditions.com right now and submit your email address because you're going to want to reserve your seats ahead of time for what's coming down the pipeline. Now, also as well, I told you guys in the past, I said there's special members benefits. People were saying, oh, well, DW, it costs $12 for this and it costs this. I told you I do everything with you in mind. So by 12 midnight tonight is the cutoff date for people who are on my books to get the super duper steep discounts as for what's coming up in September. Yes, our first investigation is in September. That's when we roll out our very first investigation with EerieExpeditions.com. So you got to 12 midnight to get on the books. It's all kind of discount codes spread out all over the place. If you was a past previous member, shoot me the email, get your price back because you know you locked in at $399, $499. Y'all got all the benefits in the world. Trust me, when it all rolls out, you're going to be like, man, I really wish I was a member because they ain't paying nothing to do this. It's going to be minuscule for my members because the members are the people who kept us going through all the drama and all the bull crap. And those of you who've been with me, you know, DW, I need my membership back. All right, here's the price. Fix your price. Boom, boom, boom. EerieExpeditions.com. Head on over. Submit your email address. Reserve your seat. Peace out. From a dream, now here's reality Baby, baby, you are really hurting me Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad I'm doing fine But nothing ever changed I've been in a small town corner in Louisiana for the past season And in that time, I've seen my fair share of death Elderly people who passed away from heart attacks Drunk drivers, gunshot victims All this has come across my table but nothing could have prepared me for what was about to happen when a hurricane rolled in from the south, leaving the town without power for three days. People turned on their generators and their heat and the mud made everything unbearable. As we came out of the phase where there was no power, I knew I would have my work cut out. And just as expected, bodies started coming in. One was a man electrocuted by a down power line, but then came a body that left me speak. This corpse was mangled beyond anything I had ever seen. There were deep claw marks across his chest, so deep that they reached the bone. His hand and foot were missing, torn off brutally. As I examined the body, the sheriff came walking, asking me what he thought I thought the cause of death was. And I told him it looked like a wild animal attack. But the sheriff's response really shocked me. It was right then and there in that moment that he told me to change the cause of death to a car accident. And that's when all the drama started. Hold on, wait. You want me to say that these claw marks and this missing foot and this missing hand is all from a car accident? Now, in my mind, that was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. He goes on to explain to me that this man had no family and that the body will be cremated. And that cremation will be paid for by the city. Listen to me. In my mind, I'm thinking to myself, now this is a cover-up. But why? Now, I need you to imagine a scene. Me standing on one side of the table, standing on the other. I remember his badge glistening off the light that shined above the body. I insisted that he give me an explanation as to why he wanted me to lie. That's when he went on to explain what really was going on. He said that this man had been shooting at the Bigfoots on his property for years and that he believed that when power went out, hurricane hit, these creatures finally decided to exact their revenge. Understand, I'm not from Louisiana and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I personally didn't believe in Bigfoot. Now, in my mind, had you said that this was a bear attack or a cougar attack? Yeah, we could attribute it to that. But him standing in front of me trying to tell me that this was a Bigfoot? Nah, man, that didn't add up. Not at all. So I explained that to him. 
I say, sir, I understand what you want, but there is no way that I feel comfortable attributing this to a car accident. This is my career we are talking about here. Had you said bear, had you said cougar, okay, we could have compromised, but a car accident makes no sense. I wasn't trying to ruffle feathers. I wasn't trying to go against the man. It's just that the request that he made of me made no sense at all. Like in the back of my mind, if you got me taking this and turn it into a car accident, next thing you know, you're going to bring some poor kid's body in here that you done shot up 20 times and you're going to tell me that was a car accident too. No, no, no. Right here, right now is where I decided to draw the line. You can see the anger on his face as he turned to walk out of the door. He says, well, the mayor is going to be in contact with you soon. Listen, now check this out. Later that evening, I'm at home. It's about 7 p.m. There's this knock on the door. Knock, knock. And it's the mayor of the town. Have you ever opened your front door for someone and they just walk in your house like they pay the rent? Well, that's what he did. This man just walks into my house like he's paying the light bill, the water bill and everything else and plops down on my soap. Then starts to explain to me that over the past 30 years, they've had problems with Bigfoot in this area. And that over that 30 year time span, they have always classified anything that happened with a Bigfoot as a car accident. Then he gives me an ultimate. He tells me I have two options. I can play ball or I can lose my job. Imagine the nerve of this man walking up in my house telling me this. Understand at this point I'm pissed. And again, I admit I'm not from this town. But in my mind, like I told you before, if I let them get away with this, next thing you know, they're going to lynch somebody. They're going to shoot somebody. They're going to do something. And I'm going to be the person to cover it up. And guess who all that falls on? It all falls on me. I say, listen, Mayor, I need you to understand. I can do this as a bear, as a cougar. I'm willing to do it as anything else. But I'm not doing it as a car accident. He sits back on my sofa, takes a deep breath and says, listen, son. I told you before, this town is known for Bigfoots. He says, then we have all these internet punks who think they feel researchers and investigators. If they get wind of this, our town is going to be packed with a bunch of dumb SOBs running around in the woods. And we'll have even more bodies on our hands. Trust me, make it a car accident. That's when he stands up and begins to walk towards the door. As he's walking out of the front door, I'm thinking to myself, man, something weird is going on here. This is crazy. Let me at least pretend like I'm willing to compromise. So I look at him and say, sir, I tell you what, give me tonight to think about. It. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Now catch this. The next day I go to work, the sheriff is there again. But this time he's with this little old lady named Barbara. He says, Barbara, tell him what happened to your grandson. And the words that came out of Barbara's mouth shocked me to my core. Because she explained that five years ago, a grandson went on one of those Bigfoot websites and posted pictures of these things in the woods near their house. Well, the next thing she knew, there were 10 people in the woods. Some of them with cameras, other ones with guns, trying to kill these Bigfoots. Barbara explains to me that the sheriff had to run all those folks off. Then two months later, after they had all gone, her grandson went off into the woods just to hunt and never came back. A search party looked for him for three days. And when they finally found him, he was torn to shreds understand listen to me this woman is telling me this story with tears in her eyes and when she's done she turns and walks out and the sheriff looks at me and says son i know you think this doesn't make sense but i'm asking you to do this for the sake of our entire town now i find myself in a situation where i'm completely perplexed and over the next few hours i think about it Call the sheriff back and I told him, listen to me, I'm going to do this, but you ever come up in here trying to cover up a murder or some police brutality? I'm going straight to the FBI. You understand me? Calmly, he says on the phone, son, we don't have problems like that around. You won't have a problem like that. So guess what I did? I changed the call of the death to a car accident. That body was cremated. When it was all said and done, I couldn't help but feel like I was corrupt like I was filthy, like I was dirty. Then one night, the sheriff came by my house, knocking on the door and said he had something to show me. This man shows me the dash camera footage from one of his officers who was out on the call. And this giant nine foot tall creature walks across the road. Now, the craziest part about all of this is the officer and the person that he had pulled over, neither one of them 
saw this thing. It moved that fast and that quiet. And listen, from that point on, I understood exactly what the town was dealing with. Now, I worked there for four more years before I moved on and came to the job that I currently get this when i told them i was leaving they offered to match the salary of the new job i had but the city didn't have the money in their budget however i did agree that in special cases i would come back to a system because after what i saw on that camera no people don't need to be running around in the woods riling those things up they need to be left alone and you don't truly understand the power of those things until you have to deal with the dead body.